Here's your WNEM TV5 news update. Good evening, everyone. I'm David Custer. Here's a look at the stories we are following tonight. Pfizer and BioNTech have now officially asked the FDA for emergency use authorization for their COVID vaccine in children 5 to 11. If approved, younger children would receive one third of the dose used in adults. A local infectious disease specialist says Pfizer's data proves it's safe and effective in this age group, and there are a number of reasons why they should get it once it's approved. The most important is these children could act as vehicles of transmitting it to others who are vulnerable in the house. Um, they can get it themselves, although it is less serious in kids, it can still cause significant disease, uh, one of which is the multi-system inflammatory syndrome or long-term complications from COVID-19. So there are so many reasons for that. If Pfizer's application is approved, it would make it the first COVID shot approved for use in children 5 to 11. A mid-Michigan school forced to close today after a threat of a suspicious package. State police tell TV5 the bomb squad was requested by Saginaw police to investigate a suspicious package early this morning at Thompson Middle School. It was cleared without incident. Out of an abundance of caution, Thompson stayed closed for the remainder of the school day. Classes will resume tomorrow. An abandoned school in Flint is a total loss following an overnight fire. Crews responded to the old Washington Elementary building on Vernon Avenue around midnight. This afternoon, a construction team demolished the building. Fire crews believe the cause of the fire is suspicious and state police have taken over the investigation. And now here's Brian with your forecast. Thanks very much, David. After a couple of dry days, it's back into that dreary weather we've been talking about now as we head into the end of the work week. Here on the Sky Tracker tonight, we still see this sprawling but weakening area of low pressure drifting across Illinois and set to just drift farther north across Lake Michigan and Wisconsin as we head into tomorrow. You can see around that broad circulation, we have bands of rain already rotating up from the south and more of these these intermittent showers, possible thunderstorms will be settling in along with the likelihood of some locally dense fog as we head on into the overnight period. So timing everything out 8 o'clock to midnight on our Thursday evening, just seeing increasing amounts of gradually heavier and heavier showers. It'll mostly be nuisance rain through the early part of the evening, but then you see these heavier pockets popping up here and there by the time we hit midnight. Some of that rain may actually even be accompanied by a few rumbles of thunder at times that'll carry us into the morning commute 8 a.m. on Friday. Not only may you have to contend with some some downpours and certainly some wet roads on the morning drive, but again, locally air, locally dense. That is areas of fog will be taking over, so expect some visibility problems and overall just plan on giving yourself plenty of extra driving time on your Friday morning. Heading into the midday period, we'll continue to see these intermittent showers rotating in from the south around low pressure, but as we start to poke at least some holes in the cloud coverage tomorrow afternoon, that added sunshine will warm things at the surface, destabilizing them, adding to another round of pop up showers, possibly with some heavier downpours and some thunderstorms. And unfortunately looks like for the first time this high school football season, there will be some wet weather to contend with in parts of the area as our high school football games are getting going on Friday evening. And oh yeah, those showers really not letting up to any significant degree until we move into the second half of our Friday night. But by the time the general uh, large, I should say the uh, overall slate of this rain begins to wind down late Friday evening and uh, around uh, midnight on Friday. In fact, we'll pick up anywhere across the region. I think a general quarter to three quarters of an inch of rainfall. But as you can see, just like last weekend's event, some locally higher amounts will be possible here and there, just depending on where the rain is more frequent and where it winds up being heavier as well. For tonight, 62 year overnight low, showers and thunderstorms and areas of fog. Wish I could make it sound more appealing, but that's just what we got to deal with as we head into Friday morning. Persistent showers and some thunder possible throughout the day tomorrow, high of 72. Silver lining, though, is that even with shower chances persisting at times through the weekend and here and there into next week, the one thing that will not be changing is the comfortably and unseasonably warm weather with highs in the 70s through the next seven days. Remember to tune into WNEM TV 5 on air and online 24-7 for the latest news, weather, and information.